friends, it's me, Alexi, and today I have quite the large book haul for you. Hi friends, it is lovely to see you guys and chat with you guys. It's been a pretty busy week on my end. Getting back into grad school is a process. <laughs> for sure. But I am so excited because I have been buying books uh, kind of like crazy, which I know is not the best, but I've just been very, very excited about a bunch of different books that I've been seeing everywhere. I really wanted to share those with you. But also one of the main reasons I'm excited is because I have all of the books that you guys have sent to me for Christmas over the holidays, and I am just so incredibly excited. Quite a few of you have also written me letters, which will not be shared here because the letters are all very, very private and really special to me and have all made me so incredibly happy. But I did want to give a little quick shout out to everyone who has written me a letter. To Maggie, thank you so much for your adorable snowman letter. It was so sweet and I love the stickers. I'm actually going to be using them in my daily planner and I will think of you, Maggie. So thank you. To Veronica, who gave me the beautiful postcard with the moon on it. I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and the post postcard is now in my room by my perfume. I love Moon so much and this was so incredibly thoughtful so thank you and thank you for the recommendations as well. And then finally to Jen, I just want to say that your letter absolutely made me cry um, and not just a little cry like sobbing tears. It was so incredibly touching and it means the world to me. All of your letters are in my room. They've just brought me so much joy and I just I want to say for all of you who say that you enjoy my content and that I bring a smile to your face, I just want you to know that you do the exact same thing for me and seeing your letters, your comments, they just genuinely make me feel happy during times when I really, really need to feel happy. But okay, let's go ahead and open the gifts. I have a nice cup of coffee here. This is gonna be a long haul, so I hope you like unboxings and book mail and really long book hauls because I am excited. Uh, so yeah, we should totally just start. I'm so excited! <laughs> Oh my God, I don't know who this is from, but it's wrapped. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about it when the books are wrapped. It's just like a whole other thing, okay. Okay, it says, thank you for all you do. You have renewed my love of reading. Oh, I love to hear that. Merry Christmas, Michelle. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. That's so sweet. Um, that means so much to me. Every time one of you guys are like, oh, I love reading again. I just, I get excited about it because I'm a nerd. <laughs> So here's the nice packaging. Very excited. Okay, here we go. <gasps> yes! <laughs> I'm so excited! This has been on my Amazon wish list for such a long time. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. However, it is sapphic, which is so exciting. I think it's gonna be really, really cute. This is also like from an indie press, um, which I love because I really love supporting indie authors as well. So I am just, I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Michelle. Okay, let's do the next one. Yeah, I love the sound of it. It's just like so satisfying. This is a good day all around too, because after this, I'm getting a burger. Like I just ordered a burger from Grubhub from Red Robin. We love to see it. I hope you enjoy these books from Christine. Christine, you're so sweet. By the way, Christine, I think this is gonna go up on Saturday and I'm almost done with our buddy read. Uh, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on Emma. So excited. Oh my God, you guys. It's the, it's, I think this is the next one in the Mysterious Benedict Society, which I am so excited about. If you have not read this series, it is a middle grade series. I loved the first one so much. And I have been wanting to collect this series from a collector's standpoint for years, for literal years, um, just because I think it's so aesthetic and beautiful. The illustrator is actually the same illustrator who illustrated the Wildwood series. Her name is Carson Ellis. She's one of my favorite children's illustrators. Look at this. I mean, it's perfect in every single way. Thank you so much, Christine. Okay, next one. <laughs> this is really fun. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Oh, I'm, am I opening it backwards? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? No. I, okay. How do, how do I open it? No. No. 
No, oh my god. Ah! Sorry, it scared me. <gasps> oh, this one's wrapped too! <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, look at how pretty the purple is. You know I keep these bags. Like, I don't, I don't know why, but I just think it's really fun and I keep all the bags. Okay, the notes. Says. Oh, by the way, I always keep the Amazon notes with the book so that I can use them as a bookmark when I'm reading them. I, I never throw them away. So it says, hi Alexandra, this memoir made me fall deeper in love with winter. I realize it's different than what you normally showcase on your YouTube, but trust me, it's the perfect book to cozy up next to the fire with. Happy holidays from Brandon. Brandon, that's so sweet. And I'm so excited. I, I am always down to try a new book if you guys ever wanna send one my way or let me know. I've also really been wanting to get more into nonfiction, so this is perfect. Oh, look at how beautiful this is. Look at the cover of that. Oh my goodness. So this is Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. Brandon, you know my taste. This sounds like something I will love and I will definitely be picking this up very soon. Thank you so much. Guys, I just, I don't deserve you. I love you so much. <laughs> Just the thoughtfulness of the memoir. Like he's like, hey, by the way, I know you don't normally like this, but I know your taste. Like it's just so thoughtful. It really is. So this is, hey Lexi, you are the sweetest and your videos and great attitude have been one of the only things to help me get through post-op recovery. Oh, thanks so much. And I hope you enjoyed the books. From Parmida. That's so sweet. Am I pronouncing your name right too, Parmida? Because that is beautiful. Let me know. Correct me in the comments so that I'll know how to say it correctly. Um, but that's so incredibly sweet. I hope you're doing okay. I'm sending you lots of love. Oh my God, you sent me two? Look at how beautiful this is. This says fierce fairy tales, poems and stories to stir your soul. That is stunning. Oh my goodness. That is so thoughtful. Also, something that I haven't mentioned on my channel, I'm trying to read one poetry collection every single month in addition to one classic every single month. So this is perfect. I will definitely read this one of the months of the year because it has poems. I'm excited. I remember this one. I remember putting this one actually on my um, wish list too. I Believe. I'm pretty sure. This is called Mayhem. This was one of my um, most anticipated releases, I think last year. I just, I never ended up getting it, but I am so incredibly excited. First of all, look at the cover of this. So incredibly beautiful. Thank you so much again. I wish I could give you a really big hug. I always recognize your comments and you're so sweet and kind to me. So thank you so much. Seriously, thank you so much. So this one says, I'm gonna be real. This movie scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> Okay, I already know who it's from, like without even looking, just because I can recognize. But I'm loving this cover. I hope you have a happy Christmas, friend. Love, Liv, the latte one. Liv, thank you so much. You are so incredibly kind. By the way, if you guys don't know who Liv is, I will link her channel. I'm sure you're already subscribed to her. She's incredible. She's so funny. She always makes me happy. And this is really sweet. Thank you so much, Liv. <gasps> James and the Giant Peach. You guys, look at this. I have been wanting these covers for such a long time. I actually love Roald Dahl's books. I've never read James and the Giant Peach, but I loved the BFG, and I really wanna collect all of these books in this series in particular. Um, thank you so much, Liv, this is so sweet. If you don't know what this is, this is like a children's classic, and it's about James, who basically shrinks and goes into this giant peach and becomes friends with all these little bugs. It sounds weird, but it's really good. I don't even think he shrinks. I think that the peach grows. I don't know, it's been a while. The movie scared me as a kid too, though. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liv. I would give you the biggest hug if you were here. <laughs> okay, next, this one's a little battered and bruised. I'm so sorry, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh my goodness, it says that this is from Parmida. Parmida, you sent me another book? And she got me The Trouble with Perfect. This is a series that I'm trying to collect. I actually really wanna binge the entire series. This is kind of like, um, how do I explain it? The very first book is called, I think A Place Called Perfect. And it's just sort of like this very whimsical middle grade series. And I'm pretty sure that it is a girl questioning like the rules in her city or her town because it's supposed to be perfect, but is it really? These are some of the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen. I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much. That is so incredibly cut. Three books? My God. I've got this one next. Um, it's like a little bag. It doesn't feel like a book, so I don't know what it is, but I'm really excited about it. Oh, yeah! Okay, 
So this is actually a blanket from this wonderful blanket company who has sent me a blanket before. It's called Imposia. They actually asked if they could send me um, one of their newer blankets and I picked this one up and I think it is beautiful. This company is really, really fun because all of their blankets actually are bookish in their themes. So they have like a little wash guide, a one year design and color warranty. I will link their Instagram down below as well as their website, so incredible. The one that I really, really wanted was this beautiful moon one. And I will do a cutaway so that you can kind of see what it is. But the cool thing about these blankets is that it also has a hood so that when you're reading, you can wrap yourself in these blankets with this hood and just feel like a kid again. These are so nice, like the quality, oh, I love it. This is not sponsored, they didn't pay me, they just asked if they could send me a product. And I said, yes, please, thank you. But I just love it so much, I really do. Okie dokie, so the next one I have is in this black thingamabob. Oh wow, oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. I don't know what it is, but oh my gosh. That is beautiful. So it says, to the chosen and the beautiful, Jay Gatsby invites you to a night of revelry and magic. And then it says, 1st of June, 1922, five minutes to midnight. Be wicked, be witty, be bright. I don't know what's happening, but let me just tell you, I am all about it because Jay Gatsby is my first love. Look at this. I. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. But you guys, if, if, if like this is a time thing, like it's been nice knowing you, yeah, cause I'm going to the 1920s. I, they sound better than here. Oh my goodness, the chosen and the beautiful. Wait, now hold on, no hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second, hold on. Hold, what? I wanted this book. This is the uncorrected proof, not for sale. It's for sale June 2021, and I've really been wanting this because it's like a retelling. Hold on, <laughs> but I didn't request it, what? I'm like flustered, and the reason I'm flustered is because I was not expecting to get this book. Did the publisher send me this book? Basically, this is just a retelling of The Great Gatsby, and I've been wanting this, but like, I don't think I put it on a list or anything. I'm really flushed, I'm, it's fine. So basically, this is sort of like a retelling of The Great Gatsby, except I'm pretty sure that this is sapphic, I think, I'm not sure. The main character is an Asian American, a woman, and I'm just, I'm so incredibly excited. Everyone is talking about this online. I. Thank you, thank you so much for sending this to me, thank you. Okay, I see the book and I'm really excited. <laughs> so this is from Amanda. Um, it says, I've been collecting these editions and reading them with my kids, they're great. Thanks for your feedback about your shelves. I ordered some myself, oh that's exciting, but they're not here yet, enjoy your gift from Amanda. Amanda, do you have an Instagram? Uh, not. You don't have to get one if you don't have one, but if you have one, tag me on Instagram so I can see how you style them. Amanda is getting the exact same bookcases, I think the ones with the ladder, not these ones in particular. Um, and I'm so excited. By the way, if you ever wanna know, this is from a um, furniture company called Martin. But Amanda, you have spoiled me because she got me another of these beautiful additions in the Royal Doll Collection, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is one of my favorite books of all time. I think it's beautiful, I think it's whimsical, I think it is a book that anybody could like at any age. I feel like all of us kind of know the story. Charlie gets a golden ticket, goes to this magical candy factory, and I am just so excited. Thank you so much, Amanda. Okay, next up we have this book. These bubble wraps are cool. So the next book is really exciting because it is a middle grade, but it was written by one of my subscribers and I am so incredibly excited for her. So this is Alicia in Atlantis and this is by Natalie Lane. And Natalie is such a sweet, incredible person. She reached out to me. I recognized her from her comments actually, but she reached out to me and she said that she had just had this published. I think it's from an indie press. Of course I said yes. I, I love supporting my subscribers, but also, I love supporting indie authors. So I just wanna read the very first part of this. It says, it's not unusual for 12-year-old Alicia to lose control of her emotions and create a scene at school. It is unusual when one day she's attacked there by a giant frog monster and plunged into the underwater realm of Atlantis. So that's kind of like a little bit of a preview for what it's gonna be about. It looks incredible. If you're interested in middle grade or if you have any kids who particularly like books about mermaids, you might 
might wanna check this out. Um, congratulations again, Natalie, this looks incredible. So this next one says, I'm sorry for what you have to go through at this time. May you find comfort in family and friends, um, even fictional ones. Hugs to you and your family from Christine. This is so incredibly sweet. Um, thank you, Christine. Thank you so much, you're so incredibly thoughtful. Uh, not to get too into it, but I had a family member die from COVID last week and I was really, really sad about it. Um, yeah, so uh, this is really, really sweet of you, Christine, to think of me. Thank you so much. Oh, and it is the Mysterious Benedict Society. And you know what? This means so much to me because of the note as well. So thank you so incredibly much, Christine. You were just so sweet. You really, really are. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Okie dokie, let's go to the next package. Ooh, this looks so pretty. Merry Christmas, you make my day every time you upload, Alexandra. You are invaluable. I love you so much. From Jesse, your friend, Bowties and Books. Jesse, you are the biggest sweetheart in the entire world. Thank you so much. For those of you who are unaware of who Jesse is, well, first of all, I'm sure you're subscribed to them. They have such an incredible channel. Jesse is such a light. I love all of the things that Jesse does, but especially if you love TBR games, Jesse has like some of the coolest and most innovative TBR things that they do. In particular, they actually have their own TBR cards that you can even purchase and play like a long with them, which is so incredibly cool. I will go ahead and link Jesse's channel down below. They are such a dear friend to me. Thank you so much, Jesse. You are just the sweetest person ever. Uh, so they got me The Girl Who Sailed the Stars by Matilda Wood. I have been wanting this for such a long time. Matilda Wood actually is known for doing magical realism in middle grade. I have The Bird, the Boy, and the Coffin Maker by Matilda Wood, and I've been wanting this book for such a long time. So it says, in the village of a thousand ships, all Una wants is one to call her own. Thank you so much, Jesse. If you were here, I would give you the biggest hug. Next! <laughs> it's wrapped! <laughs> I don't know why the wrapping like makes it, oh no, my burger is here. So I am so incredibly excited to open this one. Let's see who this is from. It says, Merry Christmas, enjoy your gift as much as I enjoy your videos from Hunter. Hunter, that's so incredibly sweet. Thank you so much. And look at how beautiful it is. And of course I will keep the packaging and of course I will keep the note, like always. Also, genuinely, you will hear the doorbell ring in a second because um, I see my burger. So that's exciting too, it's a good day. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, I think this might complete the collection. Uh, this is Roald Dahl's Fantastic Mr. Fox in these stunning editions. Hunter, this absolutely has made my day. Thank you so much. Look at that cover. FYI, I'm obsessed with foxes and I've never read this book, so this might be going on to my immediate TBR. I see my burger. I ordered a milkshake too, I splurged. You gotta splurge every once in a while. You gotta get the milkshake, you know? You only live once. That's what I always say. We've got two more packages. I'm like, sorry, I'm so obsessed with trying to figure out the burger situation. Oh my God, this is huge. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh my goodness, two? No. I love this packaging. You guys, look at this. This is so cute. <laughs> okay. So the note says, Merry Christmas, enjoy the holidays. This was uh, one of my favorite books from Carlene or Kay. Kay, you have sent me so many Christmas gifts. Thank you so much. Ooh, okay, so this is The Phantom Tree. Oh, fans of Kate Morton will enjoy this. Kate Morton is one of my very favorite authors of all time. I love her book so much. I've never heard of this. Allison stumbles across a delicate old portrait, supposedly of Anne Boleyn. Okay, this is so funny because I've actually been wanting to read more historical fiction around the time of Anne Boleyn, so this is, Hilarious. Okay, it's like it's like you're reading my mind. This painting is more than a beautiful object from Allison. It holds the key to a past life. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, I can't wait. Thank you. Ooh, okay. This is the Betty Davis Club. I love that song. Do you guys know the one that's like she's got Betty Davis eyes? And she tease you. She'll you. What a bop. Do you know what I'm talking about? She 
Okay, anyways, the Betty Davis Club. So this says, the morning of Bernice's wedding, Margot drinks a double martini and contemplates the many mistakes she's made in her 50 odd years of life. Spending three decades in love with a wonderful but unattainable man is pretty high up on her list of mishaps. When the young bride flees, taking with her a family heirloom and leaving behind 600 bewildered guests, her mother offers Margot 50 grand to retrieve her spoiled brat of a daughter. Interesting. Thank you so much, Kay. This is so sweet of you. Um, I also really love that you're sending me books that you personally really, really love. I love them. Thank you so much. And finally, I think this is the last one. There's, I'm looking at a package. I don't know if I ordered that or if that's to me. I'll check in a second. And then I'm gonna eat my burger and then I'll come back. I really suck at this. Okay. Okay, this is really cool because somebody actually made a package. Like this is a package from somebody that they made for me for Christmas. I am in shock right now. Okay. There's a little note, oh my God. Okay, I'm not gonna read this out loud because um, I don't like to do that with letters just in case there's anything personal, but I will um, tell you who it's from in a second. Oh, no way. Oh, you're from South Louisiana? Oh my goodness, hey, we're so close. Rachel is teaching me uh, Cajun French as well in this. Your letters, I don't know why, they always make me really emotional. This is so sweet. Rachel, thank you so much. Your letter is so sweet. Thank you so much, that means a lot to me. So these are some of Rachel's favorite books and she wanted to send them to me. Do you know how I said that The Great Gatsby is one of my favorite books and I'm in love with Jay Gatsby? <laughs> oh, guys! Look at this cover of The Great Gatsby. Here's the funny thing. I've been wanting to purchase like The Great Gatsby, like a really pretty version, and there's like a couple different ones that I'm looking at, but no special edition has caught my eye. I've never seen this before. This is stunning. I am so excited. Rachel, I am so excited. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, and then also look at this one. You guys, I've, I've never seen The Great Gatsby like this before. Look, oh my gosh. It's just, it's like it could blind you with beauty. <gasps> Look at the inside! Rachel, thank you so much. Oh wait, and then there's another one too. I'm sorry, I was just really excited about The Great Gatsby. But there's this one too, which is the house at the end of Hope Street. I've never heard of this before, but this looks beautiful. It says sweet, magical, bookish, and romantic. Oh. Thank you. Well, you guys, I think that's it for all the packages. I'm gonna take a really short, quick little break where I eat a burger and drink my milkshake, and then I will come back here and I will show you all of the books that I have purchased as well. But one last time, the biggest thank you to every single person who has sent me a gift, who has written me a card or a post-it, and also to every single person who has taken time out of their day to leave me a sweet and beautiful comment. It never goes unnoticed or unappreciated. Even when I'm going through really dark things myself, you always brighten my day. So thank you so much. And I will see you back here in just a second after I have finished my lunch. Hello everyone, I am back. I know it's been no time for you, but in real time, I just had the burger of my dreams. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the book haul portion of this. I mean, it's all a book haul, but you know what I mean. So the very first category I'm going to do are classics because I have ordered quite a few classics. I would go as far as to say that the majority of this book haul are going to be classics that I have ordered. So for First of all, I have a brand new edition of all of the Charles Dickens books I really want to read. Um, the edition of this is called Vintage Classics from Random House, so it's not more specific than that. But they are these beautiful, beautiful, kind of like white, off-white with like this very simple illustration on the cover and then I love the back as well. It has like some buzzwords and I just, I thought that they were so lovely. A lot of them have deckled edges as well, not all of them, but a lot of them have deckled edges. These are the books I have in this edition. So I got Bleak House by Charles Dickens, Great Expectations by Charles, they're all from Charles Dickens. Great Expectations, Oliver Twist, A Christmas Carol, A Tale of Two Cities, 
And then this one, which is the only one without deckled edges, and this is uh, David Copperfield. This also is like a slightly different color, so I'm wondering if it was a slightly different um, imprint, I don't know. But yeah, those are all of the books in the collection and I'm really, really excited. I really wanna get more into Charles Dickens this year. By the way, I hope this is okay. I probably won't be doing the summary for the classics just because they're classics, but I will do summaries for all the other books. Next, I wanted to complete my very pretty vintage classics edition of the Virginia Woolf books. And so I purchased the waves as well as the years so now i have every single book in this virginia wolf collection i think that they are so beautiful and artistic and i just i love them next up i have a classic poetry collection and that is ariel and this is by sylvia plath the cover is unbelievably beautiful i do have her other collection of poetry but i really wanted this one because the edition is so lovely and it is considered a classic poetry collection at this point and so yeah I just wanted to get this. Really what I feel like she plays with a lot is textures of words. When you read her poetry out loud, a lot of the times it can sound kind of nonsensical on the surface, but the words together make this really beautiful rhythm and dichotomy. It's just really, really great. So if you like poetry, Sylvia Plath is your girl. Going along the same lines of completing some more collections, I purchased this one, which is The Master and Margarita. This, of course, is in the Russian Vintage Classics collection. This is a little bit of a magical realism story. It involves a talking cat that may or may not be the devil. I'm not really sure. Sounds really wild and intriguing to me, but also, I love these editions. I think they are beautiful with the French flaps, and I really, really wanna collect all of the books in this edition. Oh, I missed this one by Virginia Woolf as well. I also have this one by her, and this is called Flush. And while all of the books are beautiful, in my opinion, I think this one is her most striking cover. It just looks really, really beautiful. By the way, uh, oftentimes you guys will ask me where I buy my editions from, and I've recently been purchasing a lot of these beautiful UK editions from a company called Blackwells, which I can link down below. I don't get like an affiliate code or anything. I just really enjoy them. I think that their prices are pretty fair and they get to you rather quickly. Next up, I have one, two, three, four, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten books in these really beautiful Penguin English Library covers. Now, this particular book, Middlemarch, I actually hauled in an earlier haul in November, but I wanted to put it in here because I wanted you to see that now I have like a really cute collection. So this one I've already hauled, but here it is again. It's Middlemarch. These particular editions are so incredibly beautiful. My favorite part, though, are the spines because when they line up all of these stripes just look so aesthetically pleasing and I'm so excited so we've got middle March which is kind of like a character study of a group of people we've got another version of David Copperfield I purchased this one long before I found the other set and I decided that I wanted the entire set to kind of match but this will be nice because I have the spine matching I also purchased great expectations I purchased this one actually for my dad though because we're gonna be reading this book together so I figured he could pick which version he wanted to read and then I would read the other one. But yes, great expectations with the lovely spine. Next, I have The Moonstone and this is by Wilkie Collins. I think that this one might be a crime novel. If I'm wrong, just ignore that. <laughs> Next, we have Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, which is one of my favorite classics of all time. This particular book is about a traveler and he finds himself going to all of these mythical lands. It's really quite fascinating and just an excellent book. Next, we have George Orwell's 1984 in this stunning edition. I'm just obsessed, you guys. I'm obsessed with these books, I cannot. This is like a dystopian. It takes place in 1984. The government is kind of like a big brother. They're always peering in on people. Next, I have two books by Arthur Conan Doyle, and these are both part of the Sherlock Holmes detective series. So we have got The Hound of Baskervilles, and then we also have A Study in Scarlet, 
both really beautiful, tiny little additions that I thought would be really fun to kind of read together. We've got, of course, The Great Gatsby because you knew if I was gonna start a collection, I had to buy this book. I love The Great Gatsby so much. And now I have several copies, which are stunning. Then we have The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And the final one here is Villette, and this is by Charlotte Bronte. This is about a woman I think named, was it Lucy Snow? Lucy Snow, and she goes to England to work at an all-girls boarding school. So sounds incredibly exciting. And I just love all of these so much. And now I have the whole collection. <laughs> well, no, not the whole collection. There are tons of books in this collection, but I feel like I'm starting the collection. So yes. Next up, I purchased two copies of The Secret Garden. And this of course is by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And I wanted a really nice cover because I'm going to be reading this with my book club in April. We are trying to read one children's classic every single year. And I could not choose between covers so I just figured one I would annotate and the other I would keep so this is one of the covers I think that this is so beautiful and it just says that it's a children's classic I don't really know the edition and then this one here is a Faber and Faber and I loved the illustration of this so much I just thought it was so sweet of course this is middle grade fiction children's fiction and this follows Mary who is sent to live with her brooding uncle in England and she discovers the key to a secret locked garden next up this isn't really part of any specific collection that I'm trying to collect in. I just really wanted this short story collection and it is by F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I really enjoyed the movie, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and I really wanted to read it in a short story form, but also I really enjoy F. Scott Fitzgerald. I mean, he's a little shady because he's also kind of stolen some stuff apparently from his wife that she wrote in her diary. So as a person, I don't know how much I stand him, but I do really enjoy a bunch of his writings, so. Excited to read this, sorry for the shade, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And then rounding out these classics, I don't think I've talked about this on my channel yet, but I did purchase this December, um, the entire collector's edition of the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. I have the box set here. I have the second one out. I actually read this for a vlog. I can go ahead and link that down below and up above if I remember. <laughs> and I really like these editions because they have the original illustrations and they're just so nice to read and so beautiful and charming and very whimsical. I absolutely love The Chronicles of Narnia. I think it's so fun. I've never finished the series actually, but I've read the first four. I would like to finish the series someday. But let's go ahead and start with some middle grade fiction first and then we can move to YA and then the adult books that I have. So I have four middle grade books to share with you today. The very first one is The Scan Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place. And this is sort of like a cozy middle grade mystery. Basically the headmistress, or I think one of the teachers in this boarding school for children or for girls dies and the girls decide to not contact the police, but to try to figure out what happened to her themselves. It sounds really, really great. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a throwback to Victorian mysteries. And it's just one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen as well. So can't wait. Next up I have When Life Gives You Mangoes and this is by Corrine Jetton, I think. I Please correct me if that is incorrect. So this is about Clara and I first heard about this, I think from Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, who's a channel who I just love and a very dear friend to me. This is about Clara who I think after a hurricane doesn't remember certain things that have happened to her. And so I think the book is sort of about trying to remember what happened. There's a bit of a plot twist apparently at the end. It sounds really great. The cover is beautiful. And I just, I think that this will be a really, really fun read. Next up I have such a beautiful looking book and it is called The House at the Edge of Magic. Look at how spectacular that looks. I just think it looks incredible. So this is about Nine and Nine is an orphan who is a pickpocket. She steals things. She steals like kind of mysterious object and that object grows into this beautiful house with lots of magic but apparently there is also a curse and Nine has to defeat the curse. It sounds beautiful. And then finally we have A Secret of Birds and Bone and this is by Kieran Millwood Hardgrave. So this is about Sophia and Sophia's mother can actually predict the future. She has like a magic power or something that is associated with the bones. So she kind of, like you can read tea leaves, I think that she can read bones. And basically her mom is arrested and Sophia has to try to crack this code and figure out what's happening so that she can save her mother. It sounds so unique and so fast paced and I, it also 
sounds just quite lovely, so I'm very excited to read this. And then I think for YA, I only have two books actually to share with you. The first book that I wanted to share with you is A Castle in the Clouds. This is a book that I started, but I didn't actually get very far. I think I'm on page 51. It's about a girl who works as a maid, but also kind of like a caretaker for children at this hotel. The hotel has a bit of like a mystery going on surrounding the hotel, and it's about this nanny's basically adventures in the hotel. It's supposed to be very charming and whimsical, and from what I've read so far, it is quite fun and just like a very lighthearted read. So the next book I have here is Alatsue, and Alatsue is by Darcy Little Badger. So this is about an indigenous girl. Her name is Alatsue, and Alatsue lives in America if it was an America that believed in magic and where magic existed. And Alatsue uses the magic that has been passed down to her from her grandmother and her great, 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 great grandmother. I think it's like six greats or something like that, where she can actually call the dead to her sort of. She has like a dead ghost. It's explained beautifully in here. And her cousin is murdered and she has to try to figure out what exactly happened so that he can bring the person who murdered her cousin to justice justice sort of. It's really wonderful. The magic system in this is fantastic. And I just, I really, really enjoyed reading this so much. And believe it or not, the rest of the books I have are all adults. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one I have here is considered kind of like a modern classic. And that is Love in the Time of Cholera. And this is by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I must confess, I read this book when I was too young. I was 14 and I did not enjoy it because there's a lot of graphic sex, but it's not necessarily like described in like a sexy way because a lot of the characters are older and it just kind of shows some of the grittier parts of that. And so I didn't like it, but I think I'm gonna love it as an adult because the entire theme of this is love and it has lots of magical realism in it. The premise basically is there is this girl and this boy and they are childhood sweethearts, but the girls father forbids them to be together because the boy doesn't come from any money. And so um, years and years later, after her husband dies and she's an old, old woman, he comes back and he says, I've waited like 50 something years to ask you if you will date me again because I've been in love with you this entire time. I know that I just said the whole premise, but that's what happens in the first chapter basically. And the whole book is just kind of going through all of the years that they were apart and together. I really wanted this one too, because look at how stunning the illustrations are. I just, I love it so much. So I'm excited to read this. I think it'll be beautiful. I have high expectations. Hopefully I'll love it the second time around. <laughs> Next up, I have quite a few books from Book of the Month. Technically they've sent me like, I think it's like 10 or something. I didn't wanna share every single one because I know I've talked about them before on TBRs and I didn't want you guys to be bored or anything. So I just have a couple to highlight here. This one is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And this is sort of like a murder mystery about a man whose wife suddenly disappears and dies and then he starts to date someone else and it's kind of this whole what happened to the wife upstairs, what happened to his first wife mystery. Next up we have The Survivors. Uh, this is another thriller. This is about a man who goes back to his hometown which is like this little town by the coast and he discovers I think a dead body and we just kind of see the mystery uh, that led to this person being washed upon the shore dead. Gruesome, love it. Then we have a romance called The Dating Plan and this involves fake dating I think in like a fake engagement or something like that, which was all I needed to know because I love fake dating and I really wanna read more romance. And then the last one I wanna share with you is this one, which is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which actually was one of my very favorite books of last year and I didn't put it on my list. Ugh, whatever, I think this was like one of my very favorite romances ever. It's so sweet, it involves time and it's about a girl who basically is like a groundhog day. She keeps reliving the same Christmas weekend again and again. There's a little bit of a love triangle and it's really, really good. Milkshake break. <laughs> Next are two books that I know I've had on previous TBR, so I've talked about them, I just don't think I've hauled them. They're both by Agatha Christie. One is Midwinter Murder, and the other is Murder on the Orient Express. This is a collection of short stories by Agatha Christie. They're all thrillers and mysteries set around wintertime. 
And then this particular one is about somebody who is murdered on a train and then everyone on the train is obviously a suspect and we're trying to figure out who did it. Both sound incredible. I've never read anything by Agatha Christie and I really, really wanted to last year and I really, really want to this year. Next up we have, I think the only graphic novel on this list and that is The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. This is sort of like a retelling and mashup of Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. It's really, really great. Basically Snow White is determined to break the spell cast on everyone and try to wake up Sleeping Beauty and the illustrations in it are beautiful. They're done I think by Chris Riddell and it's kind of like in this really, really beautiful whimsical black and white style with pops of gold. It's absolutely stunning. I love the book so much. The story itself was really good too, but honestly the experience is made when you get to read it while looking at the illustrations because the illustrations are brilliant. Next up we've got some surrealism slash fabulism slash whatever else you want to call this stuff. The first one is A Wild Winter Swan and this is by Gregory Maguire. It's very, uh, very whimsical. It's supposed to be about a girl who falls in love with a swan and then I think that swan becomes a person. Next we have um, a collection of short stories by Karen Russell. Karen Russell is known for her very fascinating like surrealism, new wave of fabulism style of writing. She has very weird and wonderful short stories and I just wanted to read more of her short stories. I'm right now reading Vampires in the Lemon Grove and I'm really enjoying it before I read St. Lucy's Home for Girls and I really enjoyed that entire collection as well so I just want to read more Karen Russell. The next kind of surrealist type of a book is The Snow Child and this was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. This particular book is about a girl who really wants a child. I think it's about a couple who really wants a child. They build one out of snow and then I believe this little snow child comes to life. So it sounds really whimsical and beautiful and I think it's going to be really fantastic. Next up, this is a Kayla recommendation from Books and Lala. Love her channel. This was her favorite book of the year. So you know I had to go out and purchase it and that is We Ride Upon Sticks and this is by Quan Berry. I don't know a lot about this. I know that it is set in the 80s. I think that this involves a field hockey team and that apparently they're all witches or there's a coven or something so there's like magic in here but it's not traditional magic or a traditional magic system it's supposed to be weird and wacky and wonderful and of course I'm gonna trust Kayla because I love her reading taste so I picked this up. Next up I have One by One and this is Ruth Ware. This is a thriller. I think that what happens is there is a group of business colleagues who go and stay in a ski lodge. They're snowed in and then murder happens. Next I purchased Winter's Tale and this is by Mark Helprin. This is about a thief who tries to rob I think like a random house and then he meets a girl who is dying from consumption. They fall in love. Quick synopsis but that's a basically what it's about. I think there's some magic in here. It's supposed to be kind of an epic love story but I've heard that it's really beautiful. I also really want to watch the movie but I want to read the book first. Next up I have The Toy Makers and this is by Robert Dinsdale. Isn't this so beautiful? I don't know, this looks so incredibly pretty to me. So this is about a magical emporium that sells toys and I think that one of the newest members of the family and part of this emporium is Kathy who comes with kind of like a damaged past or like a haunted past but she learns that the Emporium has secrets of its own. So we get to learn a little bit about this magical toy shop as well as Kathy, our main protagonist. And it sounds really fun and super whimsical. And then finally, the last book on this list is The Second Home. And this is by Christina Clancy. This, first of all, is kind of a little bit of a cover by because super beautiful, but also it had a lot of things that I love. So just so you know, I'm obsessed with, um, certain settings in books. One of my favorite settings is anything that is like takes place in New England but specifically on the coast like coastal little towns. That's where I want to live someday is a coastal little town where it gets a little bit cold and there's great seafood. So usually when I see that as a setting I'm always a little bit more interested. This is about three siblings whose parents pass away and they're left like this vacation home. They want to block out a memory of one summer but one of their siblings decides that they don't want to sell it and 
And so they all have to kind of rehash and relive this one summer and figure out some big secret that happened. So it sounds great. I absolutely love family dramas. Oh, glad I said that. There's actually one more book after this. I love family dramas and I love like sibling dynamics and family history and secrets and things. So it just sounds really cozy, really fascinating and I'm excited. And going along those lines, my real final book is The Dutch House, and this is by Ann Patchett. This was a Pulitzer Prize finalist as well, and I think that it looks stunning. Um, if I said that this was a cover buy, it would not be a lie. It's not the whole reason why I bought it, but it is one of the reasons why I saw this. Ann Patchett is one of my favorite people. I have yet to read any of her books, but she's a co-owner of one of my favorite bookstores in the entire world called Parnassus, and so I always purchase all of her books just to support her because she's a lovely human being. But anyways, The Dutch House is about two siblings whose, I think, childhood is sort of broken up because their mother, I believe, passed away and when their father remarries the stepmother isn't very nice and so they leave their house eventually called the Dutch house and it's about their relationship and it is about what happened in the Dutch house I love the idea of their story revolving around this house that was an intrinsic part of their childhood and I love the idea of exploring the complexities of how their family changed when their father remarried I think that there's gonna be a lot here that's really really good so I really can't wait to read this but there you have it I know this is gonna be long thank you if you made it to the very end thank you so much for watching the entire book haul I love doing book hauls I think they're so much fun to talk about just to kind of give you a little snippet preview of each book I love watching book hauls as well but yeah so now I'm just gonna go ahead and enjoy my my half melted shake. I'm really excited. Probably gonna watch some booktube. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time doing whatever you're doing. Again, thank you so much to everyone who leaves me sweet comments and who, you know, thinks about me enough to send me something. You're all so precious and I love you all so much. I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book and I will talk to you very soon. Bye! You're my best friend Didn't care about the rules Good on the weekends I'll be in fools Drift in the deep space So brave and so stupid Just like the movies How it's gonna